Welcome back everybody, it's Andrew here and welcome back to our channel. We've got some huge updates for seniors. Chuck Schumer just did something that could have a massive impact on the next stimulus package, potentially having stimulus checks for seniors in that package, and social security changes going forward. And this has everything to do with the filibuster and the fact that he's considering changing the rules to allow Democrats to approve more stimulus and potentially social security changes in a much easier way. So let's discuss the details and what we expect to happen next. But before we jump into it, do me a quick favor hit like hit subscribe and share this channel with anyone who you think might find this helpful this is a community for seniors and my job here is to be a voice for you and be a voice for seniors to make sure president biden keeps his promise to increase social security benefits increase ssi and ssdi and even approve a stimulus check for seniors in this next stimulus package. So thank you so much for being a part of our community. And if you really wanna support our work, subscribe to my second channel. The link to that is going to be in the comments of this video. And you could also support our work by becoming a channel member. The link to that is going to be in the comments as well. And that is just a monthly donation to show your support. That allows me to do this full time, to do the research and bring you the news that affects seniors the most. So with that said, folks, thank you so much for your support. And before we jump into the stimulus update, the fact that Chuck Schumer is trying to change the filibuster rules to allow Democrats to approve more stimulus, and this could even have a massive impact on Social Security benefits, so stick around for that, and the potential for a stimulus check for seniors in this next stimulus package. Of course, that is something that Bernie Sanders has been fighting for, and he wants to include it in the form of a debit card. But first, let's do a quick update on daily trending news. Now, something I get a lot of questions about is the stock market. We don't talk about that too much on this channel. That's mostly gonna be on my second channel, but every now and then I like to throw in a quick little update. Now, as far as one of the top performing stocks of 2021, Everyone talks about Tesla and the fact that Elon Musk had such a good year. But as far as stock appreciation, Ford actually had a better year than Tesla, surprisingly. And Ford's stock shares jumped by 140% last year, which was the top performing auto stock. Now, guys, let me know in the comments. I know most of you mainly live on Social Security, and then some of you guys have bonds and a little bit of stocks as well. So let me know in the comments if you'd like me to talk more about stocks. Again, that's something we're going to focus on more on my second channel. Now, one thing I thought was interesting is they CNBC did a survey asking people when they hope to retire. And they actually divided people up by what generation they in, where, are in, whether they fall into the boomer generation, uh, generation X, or the millennial generation. And one thing they found interesting actually is those who are younger actually hope to retire sooner. So boomers actually had an expected retirement age of 68, and this is just their own expectations, like when they hope to retire. So people who are boomers, meaning most people who watch my videos, expected and hoped to retire around 68. Now, millennials hope to retire around age 59. So as you can see, people, as time goes on, people are hoping to retire younger and younger. But the truth is, it's actually more difficult to retire the more time goes on because social security benefits continue to dwindle. It doesn't keep up with inflation and it becomes harder and harder to save the way things are going with the economy. So this is why things that we talk about on this channel are so important. Things like social security benefits, retirement, stocks, bonds, everything that's going to affect your retirement. These are things that are really important to take into account, especially when we see there's this trend that younger people are hoping to retire even sooner, but it's actually becoming even more difficult to retire than it was before. So these are things that we have to plan ahead for. And again, with President Biden promising to increase social security benefits, this idea of increasing benefits is more important than ever before, especially with inflation being so bad. So with that said, let's jump right into the stimulus update. Of course, the Senate and the House were both on vacation. They took two weeks off for the holiday, which they don't really deserve since the stimulus package wasn't done, but they took it anyway. And the Senate just came back this Monday on January 3rd. If you see on your screen, the dates that are covered, colored in blue mean the Senate is back in session, and the dates that are yellow means that both chambers are back in session. Green means that only the House is in session. So 
Currently, the House is still not back in session. The Senate came back, and Chuck Schumer promised before their vacation to immediately bring the stimulus package to a vote. He said that within the first week, he was going to bring this package to a vote. Well, it's Wednesday, and he still has not done so, so we're halfway through the week. But what is going on in the Senate, and what do we expect to happen next? And yes, we're going to talk about the filibuster rule in just a second. Well, the Senate has been doing things like trying to bring voting rights to a vote. Of course, Democrats are trying to reform voting rights and the rules that go into play with that. They're also trying to nominate judges and things like that. That's not really going anywhere. Apparently, these snowstorms have been slowing down work in the Senate, as a lot of the senators have not been able to make it back to Washington, D.C. Well, as Bernie Sanders is trying to include this $1,000 stimulus check for seniors in this stimulus package, some groups are pushing for as large as $2,000. Chuck Schumer has said that enough is enough, and he is threatening Democrats and Joe Manchin to change the filibuster rules by January 17th if they don't let them approve it. Voting rights and the stimulus package. So let's talk about this. Basically, the filibuster is a rule that doesn't allow Democrats or Republicans to even bring anything to a vote unless they have 60 votes allowing them to do so. So they call this cloture, which means ending debate on a topic. They need 60 votes to do that, and then they can try and fully approve a bill by voting on it. Now, Chuck Schumer's argument right now is focusing on voting rights, and he wants to do vote voting right reform, and he's saying that if Republicans don't allow them to do this, he's going to change the rules on how the filibuster works. And the reason this is good for stimulus and Social Security benefits is because they can use the same tactics to do this with the stimulus package and with Social Security benefits as well. Now, a lot of people were asking, why would they even do this with the stimulus package if they can just use budget reconciliation? Well, the main thing here is that budget reconciliation can only be used once or twice a year. But if they change the filibuster rules to exclude stimulus packages from that rule, then they could do smaller piecemeal deals. They could go to Joe Manchin and say, hey, Joe Manchin, you don't want the, the monthly child tax credit for families, so we'll take that out and we'll just do stimulus checks for seniors as a st single package, right? They could even do this with Social Security benefits. They could say, we're going to eliminate the filibuster rule when it comes to Social Security, which would allow Democrats to just use 50 votes to increase Social Security benefits. See, currently, the only way they can really do that is two ways, really. 60 votes which would include Republicans, which is probably not going to happen with Social Security benefits, or including Social Security increases in the next stimulus package later this year. Now, the parliamentarian argues that they might not actually be able to include Social Security reform in a budget reconciliation package due to the various rules in place in Congress. So, that means that if we're not sure if Social Security changes could be in budget reconciliation, the best thing they could do is change the filibuster rule to exclude Social Security benefits from the filibuster rule, allowing Democrats to use 50 votes to get that done this year. That could be a little bit confusing, but they can change the rules, which wouldn't require 60 votes to get this done, and allow Democrats to do it via a simple majority. Now, on its face, changing the filibuster rules seems a little bit crazy. Like, how can you change something so foundational just to get what you want. Like, it sounds a little bit extreme, but if we go back, back in, I believe, 2013, Democrats did this with President Obama to get judges approved in the Senate. These weren't Supreme Court judges. These were lower-level judges. Then, in, I believe, 2016, Mitch McConnell did this with President Trump at the time to actually approve Supreme Court judges, and it back, and then later in 2019 as well, without a single Democratic vote. And that was an extreme thing, to change the filibuster rule to approve a Supreme Court judge. That was a massive, unprecedented thing that Mitch McConnell did. So the fact that Democrats want to do this for voting rights and the stimulus package, and potentially Social Security benefits as well, isn't really a crazy situation, right? Now, as far as how this would work, it's a little bit complex. So I'll, I'll discuss those details in just a sec. But first, let's watch a quick clip from Chuck Schumer himself discussing the fact that if Republicans don't get on board, he's going to try and push to change the filibuster rule. So let's take a quick look and see what Chuck Schumer had to say. Handicapped people, elderly people. As I said in my dear colleague earlier this week, 
if Republicans continue to hijack the rules of the chamber to prevent action on something as critical as protecting our democracy, then the Senate will debate and consider changes to the rules on or before January 17th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Over the course of history, Mr. President, the Senate has debated voting rights many times and done what was necessary to take action. But rarely did our predecessors face the sort of malice that now confronts our democracy from within. And one final point, I mean the arguments from the other side, they're saying federalize the elections. That's in the Constitution that federal elections can be ruled, can be determined by federal legislation. That's what some of our great post-Civil War amendments were all about. That's what the history of voting rights legislation has been about. When state legislatures, for reasons often bigoted and racist, said people couldn't vote for one reason or another or stopped them from voting, the Congress stepped in. That's nothing new. It's unbelievable the arguments they come up with. Just totally false, totally false. So as we hold this debate, I ask my colleagues to consider this question. If the right to vote is the cornerstone of our democracy, then how can we Democrats permit a situation in which Republicans can pass voter suppression laws at the state level with only a simple majority vote, but not allow the United States Senate to do the same? And I ask that of my Democratic colleagues, my Democratic colleagues. This asymmetry cannot hold. If Senate Republicans continue to abuse the filibuster to prevent this body from acting, then the Senate must adapt. The Senate always has. Robert C. Byrd, one of this chamber's great traditionalists, acknowledged that Senate rules that seemed appropriate in the past, quote, must be changed to reflect changed circumstances. And boy, oh boy, do we have changed circumstances now with this abandonment of voting rights by the Republican Party and a willingness to let voters from one end of the country to the other be suppressed. As times change and circumstances evolve, the Senate must follow the suit of changed circumstances when necessary. So we're going to work towards that goal in the coming weeks. To downplay the threat against our democracy is dangerous, dangerous. We have seen this in history forever. When people try to subvert democracy, when they use threats of violence to do so, if good people don't stand up, the democracy can wither. We cannot let that happen to our wonderful country. There is no better way to heal the damage of January 6th than to act so that our constitutional order is preserved for the future. So the interesting thing about changing the filibuster rule is that it's actually quite simple. It can be a little hard to explain, but it's kind of a technicality where all they have to do essentially is it's a very simple procedure where Chuck Schumer, for example, the stimulus package, Chuck Schumer brings up, he says he wants to bring the stimulus package to a vote. Now, technically what happens there usually is he doesn't get the 60 votes and this just, it can't happen, right? But if a Democrat comes up and objects to this, the Democrat can object, say, this isn't allowed based on procedures. I'm kind of paraphrasing here. And then the, as long as then after that, the, my, the majority of Democrats, meaning the simple majority, just 50 votes, 51 counting Kamala Harris, votes to object to the objection, then they can override it and kind of sidestep the filibuster. It's kind of a weird thing where it's like, why are they building in these loopholes, right? It's basically a loophole and it's really simple to get done. And it's something they could quite honestly do all the time. They could really sidestep the filibuster if they wanted. Now, the problem with doing that all the time is that you end up in a situation where really there's, there's, it almost becomes chaotic. There's no rules. 
There's almost no checks and balances. And you end up in a situation where Democrats are in control and they ram through whatever they want. Then Republicans get in control a couple of years later and they completely reverse everything Democrats did. So this is why it's usually not done, but it's done with certain things like Mitch McConnell did it with the Supreme Court judges. Because once the Supreme Court judges put in, they're there for life. So the Democrats, they can't turn that over, right? Even when Democrats take over, they can't just rip that back and take it apart. So this is something similar with like the stimulus package, right? There's certain things in the stimulus package that can be turned back, like long-term funding. But when it comes to stimulus checks, you could sidestep the filibuster, approve stimulus checks for seniors, approve short-term funding, and Republicans really won't be able to reverse that even if they take majority control of the Senate if that kind of makes sense. So this is why a lot of people are saying that Democrats should do this. Now, whether or not you agree with them doing this for voting rights, that's kind of a complicated issue. But when it comes to the stimulus package, stimulus checks for seniors, and even increasing social security benefits, I think it's a no-brainer. Democrats should take the opportunity. Democrats aren't going to have majority of the Senate much longer, and they need to take care of seniors like they promised to do so in the elections. And folks, let me know in the comments if you agree. Of course, one of the main problems with doing this with Social Security benefits is that is long-term funding. So there is a chance that Republicans could try and pull that back. But what we've seen historically with large programs like Social Security, they don't decrease them because once you increase such a massive program like Social Security, which takes care of over 60 million seniors and those who are disabled, it's really hard to take that back. It's like Republicans coming out and saying, hey, seniors finally aren't living in poverty, but you know what? We changed our minds and we're going to take that away. It would kind of be, you know, it'd be a really bad political move, basically, long story short. So with that said, folks, this is what's currently on the table. Chuck Schumer is threatening to change the filibuster rule, and this could have massive implications on the next stimulus package, potential stimulus checks for seniors, and increasing social security benefits as well. And on top of that, he has promised to try and bring the stimulus package to a vote this week, as well as change the filibuster rule by January 17th if Republicans don't let them vote on the stimulus package and voting rights as well. So we should have a lot of updates in the next couple of weeks. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will keep you posted on the next stimulus package, potential stimulus checks for seniors, and social security changes as well. So thank you so much for watching, and until the next video, take care and have a great day.